Okay, so Seth's guide to the pit leader. Let's go. Okay, so sometimes being pit leader can be scary, right? Just being any leader, and like uh, you might not know what to do all the time. I've definitely come across that. So I wanted to make this video just so that maybe future pit leaders can have a better idea on what they're supposed to be doing and have more knowledge on like how things work and the overall idea of pit leader. So that they might not have to feel like I don't know what I'm doing as much as I had to. Okay, so today's main topics are why is there a pit leader? What is our goal as pit leader? And what do we need to do as pit leader? Like focusing on the specifics. Specific. Really. First, why is there a pit leader? Okay, so what do we do? So we obviously need pit, right? So this includes taking charge of rehearsals when the pit tech is not there, giving orders on moving equipment, spreading information about rehearsals and shows, etc., right? Like schedules, locations, yada the other. Um, being able to be the person the pit can fall back on if they are confused and stuff, right? Like, uh, where do we move this? And you can panic and be like, okay, right there. And then you take the pain because, yeah, neither. Um, but like, you have to be right for that kind of stuff, right? You have to carry out the wishes of the staff, and you have to be a good knowledge resource for the pit. So, okay, yeah. So being a good knowledge resource includes knowing where things are, like I said, like, you know, we had to know where to put the snare drum stand and yada yada. Um, you have to know how each instrument should be played, Besides just madness, right? You should also know, like, how to hit a bass drum and gong at the same time, right? Don't go like this, go like this. And where to hit a cymbal and stuff, right? And you have to know how things work. So, like, putting together, like, music st not music stands, but, like, stands for percussion, right? Like, the proper ways to move equipment, which I will hopefully make that video if, uh, Tanya virus goes away, but, eh. And we have to know like what's safe to stack in the trucks, like you can stack symphony or not, or what yada yada, right? Yeah. Yeah, I kinda know that stuff. You have to know like everything about the equipment and pits. And like what's safe, what's not safe, how to do so. Oh, and also number seven. Uh, you have to know who to go to when you have a question. Right? So you can go to Mr. Hendy, he should probably know most things, but the thing is he already has 120 kids coming at him every single day. So, he honestly is, I don't even know how he does it. It's crazy how much work he does and how much he enjoys it. And how much, how he can just handle so much stress. I have no idea how he does it. But, I'd rather not give him more stress, you know? So, if you can, try to ask other people rather than Mr. Hendy. Like, you should be scared of asking Mr. Hendy. Not scared of Hendy, but you should be scared of this, like, having a situation where you have to ask him. Unfortunately, I had many times where I had to ask him, right? Because I didn't know who else would have the answer. But you know, like, like the drill director, or just pit techs, or battery techs, or any staff members might know. Um, some, like, the student leadership might know, like, captains, or whoever. They might know your answer to the question. And if you think none of them know, maybe like do like a quick Google search. Like if it's like um, something about equipment, then speed, like look it up real quick. He has so much he has to do. And every question that we ask him takes more and more stress in his hands, right? So if we can, let's avoid asking any questions. And you have to be able to like tell people, like people you, you need, like Mr. Diaphone Boy, like, or girl, whatever. You have to be like, hey, um, I don't know the answer to that. Maybe ask Pit Tech, or maybe ask Mr. Drill Director, or whoever, right? Yeah. So, you have to know who to ask, when to ask, where to ask, what to ask. Okay, so how do we, how do we as Pit Leader fit in the band, in terms of like status, right? So like, okay, here's like the hierarchy of like, Who's the most important? The top, the band director, not Mr. Hendy. This is the one who's like writing drill or like, you know, like with the microphone being like, you should be at this dot, you should be at this dot. That guy, he's at the very top. Next is Mr. Hendy because he's Mr. Hendy, right? And then next would be all the rest of the staff members. So like, you know, pit tech, battery tech, color guard tech, uh, trumpet, whatever tech, brass tech. Yeah, that. Thumb. 
they are the next double, right? So, band director guy, Hendy, all of staff. This would be the drum majors. Yeah, this would be the drum majors, because, I mean, there's the drum majors, right? Um, then next would be, like, the logistics person, like, the head logistics person guy. I forget what the title is, whatever. And then next would be the captains, like, well, brass captain, woodman's captain, color guard captain, uh, pit leader, and battery captain. I'm sorry if I messed up the woodwinds brass captain thing. I don't know anything. I'm in the band room 24 7, right? I'm sorry. Um, it might be like high brass captain, no brass captain. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, yeah. So, yeah, so like, um, they're the next, right? The next would just be like section leaders, like, uh, bass drum section leader, and flute section leader, and trombone. Martin Sue's drum? No, I'm thinking this thing. Marching Sue's opponent section leader, right? That kind of thing, right? They would be next. And then next would be the general leadership, or I think they're like called go tos or whatever. I, I forget. Yeah. And then there's the rest of the band at the very bottom. Okay. So, what is the main goal of pit leader? This is going to go a lot more in depth. The main goal of a pit is, well, like I said before, the pit is kind of like the special effects section of the marching band, right? So, we want to add our special effects to their show. <laughs> okay, not their show, but like, to the whole show. We want to add our special effects. So, we are supporting them. Pit Meter, their job is making sure that the pit can support them for the best that we can. That's our goal. So, that means telling the freaking xylophone player to shut up. <laughs> this means not playing too bad, right? This means like, making sure that you're in time with the band, right? You shouldn't take lightly the idea of being with the rest of the band. So yeah, I'm gonna read off the script real quick. Our goal as pit leader is to do everything in our power to help the band sound and look the best they can via the pit, while trying to still let people have fun. Now I mean, that might sound weird, but like I've said, we're mostly special effects. So the ice cream isn't there to make the sprinkles taste better, that makes no sense. Some things that we can do to make them sound better are obviously playing our parts, making sure that we are together with them and not in our own world 24-7, making sure that we not cover their sound when, unless it's appropriate, like if it's a pit feature, then we can cover them, but otherwise do not cover the sound. And uh, well, symbols, yeah, because those are the most special effects, special effects of Ever. Yeah, okay, that was weird. Obviously, Marching Band isn't all about the music. We have to look good while sounding good. And they have drill that they can work with. And they have full body movement that they can work with. We have pulsing. No, we have, I mean, we have pulsing, sure. We have communicating. We have different ways that we can pulse, too. I'll, I'll talk about that later. So yeah, that means chin up, pulsing the same way, hypothetically. We aren't there yet, but we can work towards that. Uh, standing tall and proud, you know, so like, stand proud, chin up, at the box, get, get used to that, like, I didn't enforce this enough, I didn't enforce, um, playing while looking up and using your eyeballs to look down, uh, we all have to pull the same, etc, alright, we have to look presentable, instead of just like this, because people do, people do this, and I'm just dying, so, yeah, we can, once we get more advanced, we can change our pulsing to fit more with the music. So like, you know, if it's like fast, we can be like action-y, right? But then like, if it's like soft and peaceful, we can be like one, two, three, four, you know? So like, we can like, once we get more advanced, we can change how we pulse to match the music. But, we aren't there yet. We can't even pulse all together anyway, so, yeah. We can also maybe add some choreo to match the rest of the band, like their style. You know, like, if they use, like, a lot of fast arm stuff, I, I don't know, yeah, like, fast arm stuff, then we can do some fast arm stuff during rest, or, you know, like, yeah. Like, if their theme is, like, robots, we shouldn't be going, like, we should be, like, be be people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay? Okay, so, yeah, that's, like, that's the main goal. We want to make sure that, obviously, we aren't the main show. They're basically the main show, because they have the drill, they have, like, the main melodies most of the time were the special effects. While that is the case, we still want to add on to them and make them seem better, but we also want to make ourselves seem presentable to enough, right? Yeah. 
So that's the main goal. The second goal is to make sure that, like, everyone in the pit learns from this. Like, everyone grows as a musician, as a person. Everyone learns more about music, maybe music theory, maybe just percussion. If we can teach how important dynamic contrast is, if we can teach how phrasing works, if we can teach how to play what isn't necessarily written on the paper, then I think Mr. Henry will be really happy. Because like he said before, he is primarily doing marching bands so that we can grow as musicians in a different aspect, so that we can be better when we're on stage and we're playing concert music. He, he thinks that marching band is that we can get better as musicians for class periods. Which, I mean, it makes sense. Like, there are aspects that in marching band that clearly show more um, in marching band rather than concert band, but concert band, when I say concert band, I mean like Windows Humble, Symphonic Band, and concert band, right? They all can use information, or they all can use lessons that you learn in marching band, and vice versa. Besides all that, besides like those two main goals, we want to also just like teach pit, like, you know, like the pit fundamentals of like pulsing, communicating, how are special effects, staying in that inner mindset, how percussion should never play too loud unless, like, specifically, like, you're supposed to. You know, like, if it's a snare drum solo, then sure. So yeah, we want to, like, teach Pit, the fundamentals of Pit, like, playing with each other, playing as a Pit in the marching band, right? Playing percussion in general, etc. And of course, obviously, this is high school. This is a high school extracurricular activity. We want to have fun. Many kids in the marching band show up because they want to have fun. And they do have fun. So, we don't want to, as pit leader, overwhelm them and deny them of any fun. Because then they are going to show up again. That's the problem, right? And it's going to be like, ah, screw that! I'm never going back! And they could just do that. And now we have one less person. Or two. Or seven. And uh, we want to have fun, right? Please do not be the strict ass leader in Pit who's like making marching bands seem like a punishment. Don't make it seem like a punishment, please. Okay? This is a school thing. We want to have fun. Okay? As much as some people want to become better musicians, some others just might be there for fun. And you have to respect that. I had to come across this idea that not everyone is here for the same reason. And it hit me way too late. I should have recognized this like way earlier. Um, I realized it in marching band season of my senior year, um, like midway through. When I realized like, yeah, some of these people are just here because, I mean, obviously like they want to take band class, right? Um, but then we're forcing them to do marching band too. Um, to join band class. Like you can't do, mar I mean, you can do marching band and not band class. And you can do band fast without doing marching bands, but it's going to be very strict and generally you're just not going to be able to do that. Um, so some people are just here because of that. Some people are just here because of that and they don't care and they just want to have fun with their friends. I did not think about that until midway through the season. There's a series actually, an um, anime called Sound Euphonium. I watched it semi-recently. Um, and I'm not a euphoniumist. euphoniumist. <laughs> I don't play with my mouth. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, I did talk about a little bit of like, like it came, like that's like one of the first issues that I talked about, right? Like, hey, they just want to like have fun versus these people were trying to like get better, right? And like that kind of conflict. I didn't think about like that yet. And that helped me think about that idea. No, I thought about the idea in Marching Man. I watched Sound Euphonium after Marching Man season. Get, maybe go watch that if you want to like see a little bit about that. Or just watch anime in general. Just, yeah, sure, go ahead. I mean, that's that's an I'd say that's good anime. I, I'm not a good judge. Shut up. Okay. Pit, pit, pit. Okay, I'm just gonna read off the script. Besides all the stuff about the band, you want to make sure that everyone has a good time. Please do not be a strict ass leader who makes Pit seem like a punishment. It's alright to be strict every now and then. It's just that there's a time and place for that, right? And sometimes the atmosphere just might not be able to take being that strict. You must understand that people 
might be doing pit and or marching band for a completely different reason than you are. I spent my senior season not realizing this, and then saying some really mean things that I really regret, um, and I still do regret. So please, if you can take anything from this video, don't be a strict ass leader, or else you will regret things for like the rest of your life. You must respect the fact that they have their own reasons, and you should not try to force your own reasons onto them. We should also try to okay. We should also try to unify ourselves as a pit, rather than letting the pit split into like three or four different friend groups. Yeah. Encourage group activities like hangouts, pit cape. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Etc. Right. So like that we can bring each other together. Like assassin. That that was okay. That's good. Um, be nice to one another. Yeah, like just be nice to one another and like try to be like as solid as a group and as friends with each other as possible and not just some like three or four friend groups right so tldr on all that the main goal of the pit leader is understanding the pit's place in the marching band and trying to make the pit as good as possible while still recognizing its place and we want to make sure that we still have fun finally what do we need to do as pit leader in general we want to try to make sure that the pit is productive while still keeping a friendly atmosphere. It's kind of hard to do that. It is a school activity and we are still in high school, so we can't just be strict all the time and expect to get away with it. Um, here's a huge thing. I'm just going to read off the thing real quick. Huge! Rehearsal time should be focused and kids should be expected to step it up and try during rehearsal. But, in return, you should let them do their thing during break and outside of rehearsal. Unless they're skateboarding in the cafeteria at 8.30 at night. Then maybe stop them from doing that. Um, something I like to do was... Um, outside of rehearsal, I would like talk to kids that I, I might have been like a little bit too strict to... <laughs> a little bit! Outside of rehearsal, I would talk to them and be like, Yo, I'm cool. You know, like... I'm cool. Ugh, shades. No. Um, like, I want to show them, like, hey, look, I'm outside rehearsal, and I'm talking, and I can do this, and I'm not some person who hates social, like, I'm not some person who hates being social. I mean, I am. I'm not some person who, um, wants no talking ever. I only want that during rehearsals. And I'm only going to work for that during rehearsals. I'm not going to be like, hey, stop talking, pay attention outside of rehearsal. <laughs> like, yeah, no. So I would try to make it clear that, like, hey, look at me, I'm having, or having fun. I'm fun and I can talk and stuff, I can be social with you guys. But when I'm in rehearsal, I am focused and I'm on top of it. And I'm expecting you guys to be too. Like, I still was trying to convey non verbally, albeit. I never said that to them. And I probably should have, but oh well, it's too late. Maybe you should. Um, Mr. Handy has said multiple times, you know, like, this idea of, hey, rehearsal time is go time. You can do what you want during break, but when you're in rehearsal, you're working. And we will give you time to have a break and chill out and act how you want to. But please, during rehearsal, do us the favor of being focused since we're giving you the time to be unfocused. Um, another thing that you should do as pit leader is always be available and willing to help out anyone in pit. So this can be for anything really, like figuring out how to put a, like a snare drum stand together, figuring out how to put a stand together, figuring out how to like lift stuff, figuring out um, how to play the instrument, figuring out what is rehearsal time, and where are we going to the show next weekend, and stuff like that. You should be just willing to lend a hand to people in need, especially pits, but if you can, I would lend a hand to everyone possible, not just pit. So like, if they need, before rehearsal, they need help moving stuff or something, then you should be able to um, lend a hand. You should understand that we have a responsibility to be a resource for the people that we need. Next, you should teach what you can about percussion and music and marching band in general. Because there's a reason why you were selected for your position. Whether 
I mean, like, okay, you're gonna have aspects of everything that Asian wants. Like, you're gonna probably, like, have good leadership skills. You're gonna be knowledgeable about percussion, specifically pits. You're going to show that you are trustworthy and you're capable of responsibilities, etc, etc. I can't talk. You're most likely going to know more about percussion and or music than anyone else in the pit. Or most people in the pit. So, it's your job to spread that information to them. Like, giving timpani tips, like, play more towards the rim of the drum, rim, the end of the drum head, to play more staccato, and you want to be more legato, go more into, like, the middle, not into the middle, but, like, away from the head, or away from the center, or away from the rim of the drum, for timpani, if you want to be more legato, stuff like that. Um, stuff about symbols, like how to roll and stuff. You should know this kind of stuff, right? You should be able to tell them and give your information out so that they, their generation or whatever, can know that and they can keep building and building, right? That's what this is. This whole series is kind of just me being like, okay, I didn't teach you all this, but I want the, I want the people at this school to know all this so we can build on it and keep getting better and better. Um, another thing, part of that, understand how important the pit tech is. So my junior year, I was alone. I didn't have a pit tech. We had a battery tech and a, no, we had like two battery techs and like a pit battery tech. And the pit battery tech went mostly to the battery. So there were three people on staff, I think three people. Um, Maybe two. I'm pretty sure it was three, though. We had three people on staff on the battery at all times, and zero for pit. Because the previous pit instructor um, is, became the drill director person, right? So, I was on my own for that. So there are many rehearsals, like Tuesday nights, 6 to 9, haha, um, where we were just in the band room, and I had to lead somehow and give instruction. So, that time, I thought I was doing good. I thought I was teaching well, and that I was helping the pit get better and better a lot. Then senior year came around, and then pit tech came around, and I realized just how little I knew. And I was like, oh my god, this guy is crazy. We needed him from the start. Because he brings so much more knowledge and so much more to the rest of the pit, so much more information than we can never possibly do. We're high schoolers. We don't have nearly as we don't have nearly as much experience as these guys do. So you should respect that. And whatever they're trying to convey to the rest of the pit, you should try to help that message be uh, sent out, right? Like if they're saying like lower your mouth height, then you should be like trying to enforce that, right? And it does suck for those rehearsals that the pit tech isn't there. I have had those rehearsals a lot. And man, during my senior year, senior year, I was just like, this sucks. I feel like I can't teach anything more to them because Pit Tech does what I do and better and more. And I was just like, this sucks. I can't do anything. All I can do is just rep, repeat over and over again. And I mean, I did a couple things that he didn't talk about, but like, really, like, he's like the main source and he's just really good. So you should respect his knowledge, or her knowledge, whatever, and understand your place. Another thing that we need to do as pit leader is to make sure that everyone's having fun. <sighs> like I said earlier, um, you shouldn't have, you shouldn't lead in a way that is not fun. You shouldn't try and make pit a punishment, right? Um, mixed it up a little bit. I did this both my years, right? Um, like, don't make it the same rehearsal every week and make it hella bland. Just like, okay, let's do this section. I think you're off a little bit. I think you're off a little bit. And just keep doing that every week. That's boring. That's no fun. You want it to be fun. So, I did several things. Or, here are several examples of things I did to change it up a little bit. First, play in the dark. So, we cover up to the best of our ability, all windows in um, the band room, whenever it was not dark out. Like, most of the time it was dark out because it's like a Tuesday rehearsal, you know, it's very dark out. 
Uh, so we didn't need to cover them, but the most recent one we did, yeah, we had to cover them. Alright, so turn off all the lights, except the TV, keep the TV on, on the Mets. Um, yeah, and, yeah, so, the idea is the TV is the only thing giving off light to the rest of the pit. And it's fun, it's not just playing in the darkness, yeah. Um, I did this my junior year first, because our theme was Orbit, which is planets themed and space themed. And I thought, like, the metronome color purple and blue, like, that, that purple and blue, seemed, like, really spacey. And I wanted to create that effect of, like, hey, we're in space, let's play like we're in, like, like we're about the show, right? Instead of just playing the notes, let's try to play it so, like, we're playing about space. And that's what that was an attempt to be, but everyone just saw it as, let's play in the dark, and it became a meme, not meme, fun thing, right? So I'm like, yeah, I did it again senior year, of course, come on, it's fun. Um, yeah. Another thing I did was, of course, like, let's switch instruments. So I play marimba, now I'm gonna play my part on xylophone. And now it's gonna sound super weird, but now we're still gonna have the run through of the entire show, so we still have Grant in our head. But now we can th think about who we should be listening to run away, and just have more awareness of the group, right? Another thing that we did really recently that I really don't know how I didn't think about beforehand was instead of playing your part on your instrument, take a pair of drumsticks and hit the ground. Yeah, take a pair of drumsticks and play your rhythm on the ground. Everyone would sit in a circle and we'd all have a drumsticks and we just play our part on the ground, right? Um, this is really good so that we can show like, hey, look how rhythmically inaccurate we are. Like, look how off we are from each other. We want to make it as close as possible and then like move the instruments and play as close as possible. So like that's a good exercise, right? I don't know how I hadn't thought about that earlier. It's, it's so simple. Another thing I did is about switching instruments. Um, like for a warm-up, like singles, right? Or green scales even. Like we would just have like a, like a rotation where like every two scales you move to the instrument on the right, right? And then like we just have a rotation. Um, and that was fun, because now, like, you're just constantly changing, and it's just fun, and, like, that's a like, group bonding activity, right? Yeah. Another thing that we did recently, we had one person in control of the tempo, and changing it, and that's just weird. Like, that, you can just let someone go crazy, and, like, no one knows where we are. Um, so maybe that's not like, the greatest idea. Another thing that, um, maybe isn't more about fun, but more about just productivity, if you feel like, as pit leader, you can't think of anything else to like help the pit improve then you can ask other people so what we did was we had everyone in pit um, in pairs at a time go up in front of the pit like sit down in his chair or whatever and um we do a run through without them and then they would give us feedback at the end on like what they think that we can improve on and the funny thing is um about like 70 percent of the things they said i already thought about and i was like uh yeah we can't do that yet. Like, pulse in the same way. I'm like, well, I'm trying to get everyone to pulse in the first place, right? Like, once we even start pulsing to get, like, at all, everyone, then we can maybe start thinking about how to pulse in the same way, right? So, yeah, be aware that might that might happen, but, like, still, like, that 30% of the things that they said, you might not have thought about, right? So, yeah, it's, it's still a good idea, and it does change things up, but yeah. So those are some things that you can do to help change up the atmosphere, make it different, make it so that not every rehearsal is, and not every rehearsal is the same thing. And then uh, there's how to be a leader. I don't know if I can give that good of an answer to that. that. It sounds like that's one of those questions that's just like you have to figure it out for yourself. Because... Yeah. I can give you tips, but like I can't just give you everything you need to be a leader. This help, um, I feel like pit leader should be a junior when they start. I feel like having a pit leader be pit leader for one year is not that good. Because you can have person A be pit leader for one year, graduate, and then person B is pit leader for another year. Or... You can have person B be pit leader for both years, and that second year now, they know what they're doing, so now their productivity rises and they're better. I feel like that's just better. Maybe it's just maybe it's just biased because I was pit leader two years in a row, but I just feel like that's just better. 
So I feel like a junior should probably be pivier. Unless senior's like godlike, then maybe, I guess. But even then. Just make them center maroon then, just yeah. Uh be a how to be a leader, just Yeah. There's videos online if you really need help with being a leader. Um it's just like have fun, let your people you're leading breathe, you know? Don't be super strict, don't be super nice. Be nice in between for that. Like, understand what we're trying to do and think about how we're trying to, or think about how we're doing it and how instead we can try to do it. And just take pride in what you're doing and like, just, you should enjoy what you're doing obviously. And, you know, you shouldn't just be like, okay, I'm pit beater and just like, wear that title and do nothing with it. You have to back it up with like, hey, I'm gonna do research about like, how should we like, maybe be better at pulsing as a group, you know? Yeah, so like just, you figure it out yourself. The biggest thing is just like, care about the group, care about what you're doing, and do what you feel is right. This doesn't just go for leadership, this goes for everything. Just do what you feel is right. If it ever gets scary, know that other people have gone through being a leader too. And you're not the only one out there. And you can get through this, right? Being a leader is not easy. Um, but it does help you improve as a person. Like, my sophomore year, you did not see me, okay? Most of you. I was super quiet, very introverted. Um, yeah, I just wouldn't talk much at all. And yet, here I am, doing this. Like, who am I, right? I did not think I'd be here. Um, and sure, like, junior, junior year, I was like, okay, maybe I'll have to step it up a little bit, you know, be a little more social and fun than just like, okay, uh, do singles, uh, five, six, more than that, right? I was like, yeah, okay, I should probably be better than that. But I didn't think I'd be doing this, and like, I would, didn't think I'd be, like, this different. Being a leader, not just a pit leader, does change you. It does bring up parts of you that you didn't know that you had. And honestly, being a leader, or pit leader, doesn't mean just helping out the pit. It doesn't mean just helping out the band, it means helping out yourself, and yourself, helping yourself grow as a person. And that's really great. Okay, um, another thing. Prioritizing leadership versus being a pit member and a laborer. Laborer. Um, so one of the many mistakes I made being pit leader was I would, I myself would do things that other people could have done. Okay, so real quick. Sophomore year, junior year, senior year. All three years from marching band, I would run back to the band room for the rest of the pit whenever someone forgot something. So like, they'd be like, oh, I forgot these mounts. I'd be like, okay, I got you. And I'd run back, right? Grab them and run back. Um, that's okay in sophomore year because we already had a pit leader. But the problem is junior and senior year, I'm the pit leader. So whenever I run back to the band room to grab those mounts, they have nothing to do, which is terrible because yeah. So what you want to do is you want to think about who would lose the least by not being here. So if I'm going to talk real quick about like pulsing or something, who is like the best at pulsing and doesn't need to be here for that? In that case, it'd be like, okay, that guy. And you have to also think about like who runs the fastest or whatever, right? So it'd be like, okay, can you run back and go get the mats for them? I'm going to talk about this, right? And then they don't miss as much as like anyone else who would have left and you can still be. So yeah, you don't want to be working like that. Um, you want to delegate others to do that kind of stuff. That doesn't just go for like running and grabbing stuff, that goes for like moving stuff too. Like you you want to be the delegator. Like you're a pit leader for a reason. They put you on pit leader because they think that you have something that other people don't. You might hopefully <laughs> should have more pit experience, right? You have more leadership experience, yada yada. So, you have that pit experience that most others don't have. So you can utilize that um, like knowledge about like how things work and how things should be moved 
to tell others what to do so that your knowledge can be spread throughout the entire pit and make things more efficient. Uh, another thing, part of that, is like when I was pit leader, um, something I did not do that I really should have done is get used to playing and listening to other people. I would be playing with the rest of the pit and I'd be thinking solely about what I can do to get better versus listening back and around and listening for mistakes that they could be making or listening for things that you can help improve. So like if you hear like, um, based on play something wrong, and it's like, okay, maybe I can like tell them, hey, uh, you played it wrong, but you don't need to be away from your instrument. You can still play with the rest of the pit and not have to be in Henry's chair in the front, right? So the issue is, um, I wouldn't do that. I would just be in the front and run the pit, right, and catch any, any mistakes I could, which is alright, except now I'm not used to playing with the rest of the pit, so that sucks. Then, if you did the opposite of playing in the pit but not listening, then obviously no one gets better. So, the obvious compromise would be, yes, you have to learn how to do both. The best time to do that would be sophomore year, freshman year, yeah. if you can start to do that in freshman year, that'd be sick and nasty, bro. If you can do that in sophomore, or if you can learn how to do that in freshman year, that'd be great. But sophomore year is really the year that you want to start doing this kind of stuff if you want to be pit leader next year. So yeah, um, real quick, being pit leader versus center marimba. So obviously, like I said before, pit leader and center marimba do have similar traits. Like, you know, they're responsible, they know what they're doing, etc. right? Um, so if you're a pit leader but not center marimba, don't let that get you down. There's a reason why they chose you for pit leader, okay? Whether it be like you have good leadership skills or you know more about pit in general than you are good at map playing or something. Like that guy's really good at map playing, but they're not a lot responsible and they have like no knowledge about how to hit a brake drum or something crazy like that. I don't know how to whatever. Um, you know, if that happens, then like don't let that get you down. They chose you for a reason. Like, you know, you, you got leadership skills, you got this and that. And there's a reason why you're there, okay? They don't just choose randomly be like, oh, you're here, oh, you're here. No, there's a reason why they put people where they are. And there's a reason why you're on pit leader. So, because, like, sometimes it is scary, like, you know, just being pit leader. And I get that. I've had to do that. Um, but don't let that get you down, ever. Keep it going. People have been pit, pit leader and gone through the same struggles that you have. And they've gotten through it, okay? Okay, that's about it. Um, Kanye virus sucks. This is the first video that I've made since Kanye virus. Last week, I didn't make the How to Bells video because um, we had the musical rehearsals. It was Hell Week, and uh, rehearsals every day from like 4 30 to 9. And uh, guess what? The musical was canceled. Ooh, buddy. So that was a waste of week. Kinda. Um, oh well. Yeah, so uh, I guess we'll see where this goes. Um, I'll have the outline in the description. I'll do some little touch-ups. Um, yeah, but I'm just kind of all over the place right now. We'll see how this series goes with, uh, with Kanye virus. The rest of the school year might be cancelled. Kinda sucky. Okay, bye. See ya.